Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this gift, this gift to come together as your people, that the sun shines on down upon us now as you have come to us through your word. We thank you for this gift. We thank you for the gift of community gathered here, and we thank you for your word. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who is the word made flesh, who came to bring redemption and salvation to us all. And as we are reflecting on these gifts, this word that you have given to us, we give thanks for indeed you have come to save us. Hosanna to the king. Now, Lord, as we gather together, may your word be May, may all of our hearts be pleasing to you. May our thoughts and reflections be focused on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, this is a bit of a, uh, a pulpit, isn't it? Uh, Luther had this thing where he could get up in it and it had a little circular thing. I don't know if he ever had to be as careful about walking up those stairs as I did today. I was really kind of concerned about falling off of it. But it is good to be here today, isn't it? I, I kind of thought about asking everybody to honk their horns if they were happy, but, but no, don't do that. <laughs> I don't want to disturb the neighbors too much. But it is a blessing to be here with you. In many ways, Palm Sunday is a gateway to Holy Week. Our, our second reading really reminds us, the one that, that Ted just finished reading for us, reminds us of the humility of Christ becoming a servant, obedient to the father. I mean, that's what a servant is, right? Obedient to his master. Indeed, Jesus was obedient to the father, even unto death, Paul reminds us. And it fits also with that message from the prophet Isaiah in our first reading as well. Uh, our, our text from Isaiah chapter 50 is one of what is referred to as servant songs. The first one of those appears actually in chapter 42 of Isaiah's book. Behold my servant, one whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. And remember that the, the, the lessons both from the baptism of our Lord and, and of Transfiguration Sunday, they weren't really all that long ago although it may seem like with everything that has gone on, it, it, it probably seems like that was years ago. But indeed, we hear the, 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 the mouth of God speaking, Behold my Son, in whom I am well pleased. He says, I have put my spirit upon him, Isaiah says, to bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice. A bruised reed he will not break. A faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice on the earth. That last point of the servant song in Isaiah chapter 42 reminds us of what it means to be the servant of the Lord, the suffering servant of the Lord. And these are images of the suffering servant. And we begin here as the suffering servant enters Jerusalem, as we enter into this Holy Week reflection on what it means that God has saved His people through His Son, Jesus Christ. Indeed, our Lord has come as a king. And, but it does not seem as if Jesus has come to suffer, at least not quite yet. He has come as a king. But you see, there is an expectations game being played before our very eyes in these texts. The people with their palm branches shouting, Hosanna have their own expectations. You see, they quite clearly understand Jesus to be the Messiah, but what does it mean for him to be the Messiah in their minds versus what it means for Jesus 
to be the Messiah in the will of the Father, and that is key. We see that beginning to be played out really the first time when Peter recognizes that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and then right around, turns right around and rebukes him when he tells him that that means to suffer, die, and rise on the third day. There is indeed an expectations game being played. And one, we of course all have certain expectations of things as the people shouting their expectations. But Christ, he has the Father's plan to follow his plan, and the people's expectations will soon diverge. And then we have our psalm text, Psalm 118. We know on this side of the tomb that Jesus is the gate through which righteous the righteous shall enter. But he is also, friends, the stone which the builders rejected. Yes, the Lord is God, and he has given us a light in Jesus Christ. We are to bind our festal procession with branches, the psalmist reminds us, up to the horns of the altar. Yes, they shout, Hosanna now, but many of the same individuals who say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, will shout in just a few days, crucify him, crucify him. Everything, though, is now in place. The word has spread. Jesus is coming into Jerusalem. His renown has spread. Thanks, of course, to Lazarus and his raising. Many do believe that he is the Messiah, which is why they're waving their palms high in the air. They expect him to be the king, and he is, but not how they expect. The leaders themselves are playing their own game of expectations, but instead their expectations are driven by something else. They are driven by fear and frustration. The plot to kill both Jesus and Lazarus is moving forward even as... Jesus enters the city. The chief priests and the Pharisees and the religious elite are fearful and they give in to darkness and hatred. But that was part of the plan too. You see, Jesus doesn't come just to bring, he doesn't come to bring death, but life. And so he enters the city. On a lowly donkey. And he is initiating all that will occur on the week of his passion. The Jewish leaders react, as we so often do, when we are no longer in control. Fearful. Does that sound familiar? I would imagine it sounds familiar to many of us right now. These things that are happening around us that are threatening to divide us, the things that remind us, again, how ultimately powerless we are. Power is such an illusion, isn't it? And we like to think we have our lives in our own hands until something like this gives us a moment to pause. Yet as disciples of Christ, we know how the story ends. The good news for us, friends, is that Jesus' words are truth and life. Remember what Mary said to Jesus? They had sent word that her brother Lazarus was dying, but yet he stayed away just a couple more days to show God's power. Mary gets very angry at him, or rather Martha gets very angry at him. Lord, if you had been here, he would not have died. But yet I know that God will listen to anything you ask of him. Jesus asked, do you believe? She says, Lord, I know he will be raised at the last day. And he says, I am the resurrection and the life. That is good news for us. 
It reminds us that God is in control. He was in control that week as Jesus entered into Jerusalem, and He is in control right now, friends. What wonderful and life giving news that we have flooding into our ears today. We enter this most holy week to remember what a servant our King is and how He loves each and every one of us, how He suffered and died for us and promises still to sustain us now in these challenging days. And even until the end of the age. So as we leave this place with Palm Sunday, good news in our ears. We know where this week is leading. But we also know how it ends. And we cling to the hope in the midst of fear. And we know that clinging to hope means clinging to Christ. I pray that hope sustains you and me, not only in the week to come, but in the days and months to come as well, and throughout our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn of the day is in your booklets, Prepare the Royal Highway. Prepare the royal highway, the King of Kings is near. Let every hill and valley a level road appear. Of glory foretold in sacred story. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. God's people see him coming, your own eternal king. Palm branches strew before him, spread garments, shout and sing. God's promise will not fail you, no more shall doubt assail you. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. Then fling the gates wide open to greet your promised king. Your king, yet every nation its tribute to may bring. All lands will bow before him, their voices join your singing. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. His is no earthly kingdom, it comes from heaven above. His rule is peace and freedom, and justice, truth, and love. So let your praise be sounding, for kindness so abounding. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. Let us confess a common faith in Christ using the words of the Apostles' Creed found printed in your bulletins on page number five. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit 
and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks. You have blessed us with this gift, this opportunity to gather together as your people. We give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, who rode triumphantly into Jerusalem to be the King of kings and Lord of lords. Help us, O Lord to remain faithful to you, to hear your word and take hope and comfort in it. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And we pray that this good news would remain with us and through us as we embark upon Holy Week, as we remember all the great wonders you have performed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the community in Christ. We ask you to bless your church in these challenging times to lift us up, that we would be faithful in your call to be the body of Christ. We pray for leaders, especially our bishops, Bishop Dan. We pray for the leaders of the Lutheran congregations in Mission for Christ. We pray for the pastors and congregations of all churches and denominations, Lord, that they would lead their people. And most importantly, Point to you. Lord, we pray for our sister congregation in Peru that you would strengthen them and their shepherd as well. Lord, we pray for missionaries in far flung reaches of the world that despite the challenges continue to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And that in this holy week, that good news would spread wide and far. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the nations of the world and this nation as well. We pray for our leaders that you would give them wisdom and justice and mercy, that you would guide their decisions and lead us forth. We pray for those who are working in the trenches to bring health and healing, our doctors and nurses, our orderlies, our lab techs, all of those that are there working to bring healing and health. We pray for those who are suffering too, Lord. We know that there are many who are suffering. We pray for those who are in hospitals. We pray for our dear brother Preston, Lord, and you strengthen him. We pray for all who are in the hospital, Lord. Now, Lord, we know that as many as we could name, we could also list before you. So we offer them to you now, Lord, uh, aloud on our lips or silently in our hearts. Finally, Lord, we pray for the holy ones who have gone before us. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, and that number is many now today. We ask you to strengthen them and their grief and remind us all that blessed be they who grieve, who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace. Yeah, put those, wave them high, wave them in the air like you do care.